What's up, Kidsville Kids? Welcome back to our weekly series on prayer. We are so excited to be back with each and every one of you guys. The last two weeks, we have been talking about prayer, and not just any prayer, but the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Sorry, I was late. I was eating some pineapples, if I must tell you. Well, I have a treat for you today, but only if we can get through this entire lesson. Oh, that is a hard bargain, but I think I can do it. You think you can do it? Yeah. It's a really good treat. Okay. Like, it's an out-of-this-world type of treat. Wow. Yes. Is it pineapples? I can't tell you what it is. Ah, okay. Let's do it. I can't. But before we go any farther... We, two weeks ago, asked the kids what their favorite Bible book in the entire Bible was. And we had a lot of great, different things that kids were saying. Kids like the book of Genesis. Wow. And Ruth. Wow. And Matthew. Ah. And someone liked the book of John and Psalms. So we're going to ask them another question. What do you think we should ask them? Ah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Oh, I know. So, we talked about some Bible characters. Why don't we ask them what their favorite Bible character is? There you go, kids. Mr. Ziggle wants to know what your favorite Bible character in the whole Bible is. Comment yeah. below. And again, we are going to read them because we want to know what you guys love about the Bible. And also, yeah. while you're um, at it, comment below if you've been reading the Lord's Prayer every week with your family. Because yeah. that would be a great thing to do right now. Oh, Miss Pastor Nicole, yes. what's your favorite Bible character? Honestly, I have a lot. I have a lot, and I really don't know, but I feel like Joseph, the father of Jesus, is a great character. Oh. He doesn't say anything in the Bible, but the way he had to make sure that Mary got to a place to actually have the one and only Jesus born, and he took care of her through that entire time and raised Jesus as well, I think that shows a lot about his character. Yeah, that's really good. I think mine is the other Joseph because he had a coat of many colors just like me. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. But we are just going to go over the Lord's Prayer with the kids. Okay. So are you ready? I think I am. Okay. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Now, what did we talk about the first time about that verse? Oh, we said we're thanking God and giving him praise. Yes. And the next part is your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Okay. What did we talk about with that verse? Oh, We talked about Samuel and how he had to do God's will. Okay, and who else was part of that story that we talked about? We have Samuel and what was the priest's name? His name was Eli. Okay, so Samuel heard God's voice in the middle of the night calling him. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And what did Eli tell Samuel? He said, he said, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant listens. So Samuel had to do God's work, just like the prayer is saying. Yeah. So he called out to God, and then God called him to do an awesome work. Yeah. So what is the verse that we're talking about today? Oh, I think we should talk about the next part. It says, give us this day our daily bread. Oh, I have some bread. (laughs) Oh, no. I have some Ah. bread. Oh. There you go. I gave you your daily bread. <laughs> Thank you for my daily bread. But You're welcome. Daily bread meant more so the word of God. Now, where in the world do you get that from? Because our daily bread is something we need to feed into our soul every day. We need to read his word. Oh. Just like we get real food like pineapples and bread, so, we also need to feed our soul with the word of God. So it's not actually talking about food? No, it is not. But hey, thanking God for food is an absolute amazing thing, though, every day. And oh. wanting God to give us food is an amazing thing as well. So, oh. you know. The- so, it's, so it's talking about everything we need. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that makes so much more sense. I thought that it meant that if you have bread, you need to throw it at people. That's, that's why I did what I did, and now that, that makes way less sense. Sorry. 
It is totally okay because I had some bread here that I was going to throw at you. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm getting to know you better now, Mr. Ziggle. <laughs> that, oh, wow. That's good. But today we are talking about an amazing Bible story that I can say a lot of people may not even want to believe, but it's an awesome story. <gasps> what story is that? Okay. The guy's name begins with an E. Eli. We already talked about him. Take Eve. another guess. No, 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 we already talked about her too. Eve Eli. Eve I don't Eli? know many Bible characters. That is okay. We are talking about God's prophet Elijah today. Oh, that was my next guess. It was? No. I thought so. But we're going to talk about Elijah today. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Strap in. All right. Are you ready? I think so. I couldn't find the straps, but yeah. Okay, but you're ready to hear about this great Bible story. I am. Okay, so it starts off in 1 Kings chapter 17 about a guy named Elijah. Elijah, great. Not Elisha, Elijah. Oh, I thought they were the same guy. No, completely two different guys, and we'll get into that another time as well. Okay. But you see, Elijah, he was a poor man, and he came from a poor town. So there was nothing special about the guy. But what's really awesome is everything was about to change for him. <gasps> wow. Like what? Well, let's keep on reading and see what it is. Ooh, good idea. So God spoke to Elijah and told him there was going to, that he was going to be God's prophet. What in the world is a prophet? Is that where you make money? No, no, not at all. You don't make money being God's prophet. So God's prophet is when he calls someone to deliver God's message. Oh, like the Bible. Yes. Ah. Yes. So it's like a person Bible. A, a, per, a person Bible. Yeah, it's like a Bible, but instead of a book, it's a person. Yes. Oh, I just, wow, that, that, I made that up, but great. Yes, so a person Bible it is. So we're going to keep on going with Elijah, and we're going to talk about another guy in the story, King Ahab. Oh, King Ahab. He sounds like a good guy. Oh, no, no, no. King Ahab was a very mean guy, evil what? man. Oh, no. What did he do? Well, how about this? Every time we say King Ahab, you kids watching go, boo! And every time we say Elijah, they need to cheer. Woo! There we go. Way to go, Mr. Ziggle. Oh, wow, I didn't know I could go that high. <laughs> so King Ahab had, a had allowed the nation to stray away from God. <gasps> And they began to worship, not God, but a completely different idol. And the idol's name was Baal. Baal? That's not even a good name. Why would you worship someone named Baal instead of a guy named God? Because the people were listening to King Ahab. Silly people. The idol of Baal was called the God of the Weather. The Weather? Yeah. What? The rain isn't controlled by a... Idol? Exactly. That's oh. what was so crazy about the story. But the people be began to worship Baal instead of God. So Elijah went from just being nobody in a small little town to being a prophet that God sent to this town about the idol, idol Baal that they were not supposed to worship. Oh, that's good that God sent him. They were so silly, those people. Well, Elijah went with an important message, okay? So Elijah's message to the people, to the king, said, God says there will be no neither dew nor rain in the next few years. What? And whoa, 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 whoa. Did you say no rain for years? Years. Wow. I bet Baal didn't help him out with that, did he? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep on going with the story, and you'll find out what happens. Because God wanted to show the people that he controlled the weather and not ah, some idol. That's really smart. God is really, really smart. He is. So King Ahab was not happy with Elijah's message. So are you ready for this part? I am so ready, Pastor Nicole. Immediately after Elijah deli delivered the message to King Ahab, he had to run for his life. 
What? Why? Well, let's keep on reading. King Ahab was so angry. He threatened to kill Elijah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would he do that? Elijah was a person Bible. Why would you kill a person Bible? Well, let's keep on reading. I think this story will answer all your questions. Okay. All right. All right. So Elijah went from a high point of standing before the king to a very low point of running for his life. So what Elijah did, he made a temporary home by a river. But Elijah had nothing to eat. Well, there's bread right there. Why don't you give him that? That will come into our story in a few minutes. So (laughs) Elijah was starving. It looked like he was going to starve for days. But then this is how God showed up and did a really, really cool miracle for him. Are you ready to hear it? I am so ready. So God sent a whole flock of ravens to bring bread to Elijah every day. He used ravens? Ravens. That's kind of gross. Anyway, so God sent a whole flock of ravens to give bread to Elijah. So whenever he was hungry, the ravens would bring him bread. So how did the ravens know when he was hungry? Because God knows everything. And so God would tell the ravens, yo, you need to help my prophet out and give him some bread. Oh, that's so cool. Cool. He also had all the water because he was right by a river that was flowing. Oh, that was a good plan. But this is what's really awesome about the story. Is that just like the time that we're going through right right now, God is still faithful to every single kid that is watching, but not just faithful to them. He was faithful to Elijah through this difficult time that Elijah was in. So Elijah was just listening to God, bringing a message to the people, and King Ahab didn't like it. So King Ahab wanted to kill Elijah. (gasps) So Elijah had to run for his life to a book to make a temporary home. Ravens came down and gave him bread, whatever he needed it. But you know what? In all of it, Elijah was still faithful to God, and God was still faithful to Elijah. Wow. That was really impressive. So these kids are going through something that they have never went through before. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after. But the more we're faithful to God, the more he's going to be faithful to us. And the more we pray and the more we read his word, God is going to talk to us. And God will hear our prayers and answer our prayers, just like he did with Elijah. Wow, God is so powerful. God is very powerful. I mean, if you look at the past three stories with Adam and Eve, I mean, he created a beautiful garden for Adam and Eve to live in. They had everything that they needed. And then we have Samuel and Eli. When Samuel heard God's voice in the middle of the night, he said, hey, yo, speak to me. I'm listening to you. And now with Elijah, Elijah ran for his life, but he still was fed from God. That's, those are great stories. I can't wait to see what we talk about next week. But do you know why we're talking about stories like that? Because they all had a personal relationship with the Lord and Jesus. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yep. But since you went through this entire story amazingly today, I do have a treat for you. Here are some pineapples. Whoa, put them over the thing. My arms are really short. Oh, oh, okay. Rah, 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 rah. There you go. There you go. Well, he got his pineapples. I think he's coming back up after he stores those pineapples. And we're going to just close this awesome lesson right now. As always, you guys know that we end this time in a word of prayer. But this is what I want you guys to do for this time. We've been talking about how faithful God is and how faithful we must be and how prayer and reading your word is so important at a time like this. So if you're with your parents right now or with, or with aunts and uncles, whoever you're watching this with, I encourage every single one of you guys to after this video to just pray a small prayer and thank God for his faithfulness. Thank, thank God for everything that he's doing in this time. And, and honestly, just lift up his name because I know you Kidsville kids can do that. No matter where you're at, his presence is with you right now. So, Mr. Ziggle, do you want to close this out in a word of prayer? Okay. All right. Let's use what we learned. All right. 
Dear God, thank you so much for being awesome, for knowing everything and being super powerful. Please help us and help Pastor Nicole and help me and give us pineapples and all the food that we need and anything else we need because we know that you have everything for us. So thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as always, I'm going to end this out in a prayer that if you guys have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you guys to repeat this prayer after me. So everyone just bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I come to you today. Asking you. Asking you. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And forgive me of all my sins. And forgive me of all my sins. I thank you. I thank you. For loving me. For loving me. I love you. I love you. And in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If that was your first time ever praying that prayer, as always, I want you guys to maybe comment below. Let us know and Facebook message the church with your parents' help to let us know. Because when one person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, all the angels in heaven rejoice. And not just the angels, but we here at the church want to rejoice with you. So make sure you do that. But next week, we're going to keep talking on prayer and the Lord's Prayer. But as of right now, we're going to sign off. He's going to eat his pineapples, and we're going to see you guys next week. So see you later, Kidsville Kids. Bye.